Welcome back, dear learners. Before the ad break, we managed to do some particular questions. And with me here, I have the preparation of the DJ. Let's quickly go and do it together. Now, what you are given is the information which is relating to the month of May, and then we are to prepare the debtors journal. So let's start. It says invoice number 76. This is the first one. Invoice 76. And the day is one. And the data is P. Bird. P. Bird. And then we sold goods to him of 12,500. 12,500. It is very important, if I can take you back, that you can see that they told us that goods are sold at a markup of 100%. That simply means when you come here now, when you want to get your cost of sales, you are now saying what you want is 100, what you have is 200, multiplied by 12,500, which then gives you 6,250. So I'm coming here, 6,250. Okay, let's quickly go on to the next one. The next invoice is invoice number 77, and the day is on the 8th. We sold goods to S snail, so we're coming here, S snail, and then the goods are for 16,000. So we come here, it's 16,000 on my sales. But when I want to get cost of sales, remember, what I want is 100, what I have is 200, multiply by 16,000. That will give you how much? Please punch that in your calculator, 8,000. So here you get your 8,000. Someone is asking me, Mr. Simbi, how are you getting the 200? Let me remind you of what I said earlier on. Cost is always 100, and markup in this question is 100. That means my selling price becomes 200, okay? And the selling price is what I'm given here as 16,000. So the 200% is equivalent to the 16,000. Let's now go to the next day, which is on the 14th. On the 14th, invoice number 78. Okay, let's hear what they're saying. We sold goods to A and, and when we sold goods to A and, we gave him a trade discount of 5%. So that means when we are recording here, we're now going to say 9,200 multiplied by 95%. Someone would ask again, Mr. Simbi, why are you using 95? Before the trade discount, we're supposed to get 100%. But we allowed a trade discount of 5, so we're going to fetch 95. So I'm saying 95 over 100. This will then give you 8,740. So I'm going to come here, we're going to get 8,740. But when we calculate the cost of sales, we will still use 9,200. Then I say, multiply by 100 over 200. Then you get your 4,600. Delenus, let's quickly go to the 22nd. There is the 22nd and the invoice, 79. It then says, we sold goods to S, snail again, and then it is for 8,000. 200. So I'm coming here, 8.2. My cost of sales, by now you know, it's 100 over 200. Multiply by 8,200. How much do you then get? You get an amount which is 4,100. Here is my 4,100. Let's quickly come here and see what they're saying on the 26th. On the 26th, invoice number 80. They say we sold goods to a and, and to a end, we sold him goods of 15,800. I need cost again, 100 over 200, multiply by 15,800. That will give you 7,900. Let's come to the last one. They say we sold goods to P. Bird, so 81, it is on the 31st, P. Bird. And when we sold goods to p bed, these were for 9,600. But there was a 20% trade discount. 
That means we're going to say again, 100 minus 20, we collected 80. And then we then say, if I want to get my 80%, so I'm going to say 80 over 100 multiplied by 9,600. I want to give you a second to punch that in the calculator. You're saying 80 over 100, 80 divided by 100, and then you multiply by 9,600. How much do you get? Someone is saying, I'm getting 7,680. That is correct. You get 7,680. But when you calculate your cost of sales, you still use your 9,600. You multiply by 100 over 200. Then you will get an amount which is 4,800. Let's quickly total this up. Let's quickly total this up. Then you get 68,000. 920. Here, yeah, how much do we get? 35,650. After we have completed the debtor's journal, we are now going to quickly go and post it to the general ledger. Let's quickly post it to the general ledger. Here's my debtor's journal, debtor's ledger. Okay, so I'm coming here. Here's my plus. How much am I bringing? 68,920. Sales, 68,920. If I add that together, I'm going to have 123,920. Let me quickly come now to my trading stock. Remember, in my trading stock, here's a plus and here's a minus. That means my cost of sales must be on the credit side. Here is my cost of sales. All right? So once you put cost of sales here, your teacher is going to mark you wrong here. Never place cost of sales here. Your teacher is not going to mark you right here when you are dealing with the DJ. Never place cost of sales here, but place it on your credit side. Once you're dealing with the DJ, I repeat again, do not place your cost of sales here. Your teacher will give you a wrong there. But your cost of sales will come now to the credit side, and you're going to get 35,650. And then we're closing off the ledger account. 42,000 here, and then here I have my 42,000 here. Therefore, here I'm going to get my balance, which is now being carried down. And the balance carried down becomes 6,350. So I'm going to bring it here now as my balance brought down in the month of June. On the first, balance brought down, which is 6350 Then when I come to my sales now, remember, income increases on the credit side. So I'm going to say, debtors control, DJ. Remember, the same amount that I brought here is what I then bring here, 68920 And the same amount that I brought into the trading stock account as cost of sales here is what I bring into my cost of sales and say 35,650. And then my general ledger will be complete. Okay, now, after my general ledger, I'm gonna go now quickly and do my debtor's ledger. Here's my debtor's ledger. So remember when you do the debtor's ledger, very important. On the debit side, it's a plus. On the credit side, that's a minus. So my invoices, are going to go on the debit side. Start with P-Bed. We saw it goes to P-Bed, 12.5. So I'm coming here, invoice number 76 to P-Bed. How much was that? 12,500. Plus the 12.2, that is now going to give me an amount which is 24,700. 24,700. After I have added that particular amount. And then let's go on to the next one. S small. We sold goods of 16,000. Where is S small? Please look for S small. There is S small. Remember, plus, minus. Invoice number what for S small? 77. Invoice 77 for S small. And then when we come here, we're going to put it on the debit side. 16,000. 9.2 plus 16,000, how much do we get? 
25,200. Let's quickly go on to the next one. Who is the next one? A ant. We sold goods of 8,740. What is the invoice number? 78. So on the debit side, it's a plus. A ant, 8,740. Then when we say 10,600 plus 8,740, if we add that, it's going to give you 19,340. Let's quickly go now. Let's look at a snail. A snail, all right? And we sold goods of 8,200. There is a snail, so here is my plus and here is my minus. Okay, so what do I write here? I'm going to now say invoice. Okay, what is the invoice number to a snail? 79. Invoice 79. And my invoice comes to what side? Debit side, thank you. Debit side, which is 8,200. 6.7 plus 8.2, please punch that in your calculator. How much do you get? 14,900. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. After that, we come on the 26th. We have a end. Okay? Did we see a end anyway? Yes, yes, is a end. So we're going to come again. We have another invoice. And it is invoice number 80. Invoice number 80 to a end. And this is now for 15,800. 15,800. So when you come to a end, we're now saying 19,340 plus 15,800. That is going to give you 35,140. And the last one is P bird. And we sold goods of 7,680. There is P bird. I'm going to come again and say, Invoice number 81. And how much is that invoice? 7,680. How much was he owing us? 24.7. Now we have sold goods again of 7,680. In total, how much is P. Bed owing us now? P. Bed will be owing us 32,380. Once you have done this, it is very important that you also go and complete your debtors list. So here's my debtors list. 32380, P-Bed, 32380. And then we come to a small, 25.2. A small, 25.2. And the next one, a ant, okay, a ant, okay. So this is snail, okay. Let me just correct that part. Let me just correct that part. You can see here, I put in the wrong amount. Just make sure when you're posting, you're posting to the correct data. S snail, how much was S snail? 14.9. A snail is 14.9 there, okay? So P bed was right. A snail is 14.9. Here is S snail. And then S small, S small, how much is S small? S small is 25,200. And then to A end, it is 35,140. And then when you add up these figures, you are adding everything up, it should give you an amount which is 107,620. 107,620. Now, I'm just going to quickly do an accounting equation with you, and it's not going to take much time. Here is the accounting equation. It says, prepare the accounting equation for the transactions given below. All goods are sold at 25% markup. Okay? So there is a change now. We're using 100% all the other time. But now here they're saying 25%. Let's see how we could do that. So goods to P bed to go 0.5. Remember, what do we do? Disk it. Remember, disk it. All right? So that means account debited is your debtor's control. And debtor's control is an asset plus 12.5. Account credited, sales. Sales comes to owner's equity. It is income 
and income increases on its equity, plus to care of 0.5. Liabilities, no effect on your liabilities. Let's now come to the second part, because now we need to get the cost of sales. How do we get the cost of sales? What we want is 100. How much is my selling price? 125, you're correct. How do we get the 125? Cost is always 100. Cost is always 100. Markup in this case is 25. Therefore, selling price becomes 125. So what we want is 100. What we have is 125 over and then multiply by 12,500. Once we do that, we get cost, which is 10,000. That becomes our cost of sales. Account debit, cost of sales. And cost of sales decreases our owner's equity, minus 10,000. Account credit, trading stock. Account credit, trading stock. And trading stock decreases because we're selling goods, minus 10,000. What happens to our liabilities? No effect. Now, the last one is the thing. Sold goods to A and for 9,200, 5% less trade discount. So remember, we did calculate this one earlier on, and we managed to get an amount which is 8,740. We did this just a minute ago. So when I come here now, I'm going to now say my account debit is debtors control. And then I'm coming here to say plus 8,740. Account credit, sales. On a equity, plus 8,740 liabilities, no effect at all. Then the cost of sales, if you remember what I said earlier on, we we'll cal we'll calculate cost of sales on the original selling price. So it's going to be 9,200 multiplied by 100 over 125. And then that is going to give you how much? Please punch that in your calculator. I want you to have your calculator close to you. 100, which is the cost. Please say 100. Divided by 125. And then you multiply that by 9,200. That is going to give you an amount which is 7,360. So when I come here, which account am I debiting? Cost of sales. Cost of sales, I'm coming to my owner's equity, minus 7,360. And then I come here, what am I saying? Account credited is going to be my trading stock. And on my trading stock, all right, I'm selling goods, so it's going to be minus 7,360. What happens to my liabilities? No effect whatsoever. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to talk of my internal controls. It says, Rajesh, the owner of Kasi dealers, has realized that some of his credit customers are not paying on time and some eventually do not pay at all. Upon further investigation, Rajesh discovered that some of the customers were paying their accounts into the manager's personal account. So the manager was collecting the money. Dave, the manager, is admitted to receiving the payments in his personal account. What internal control measures can Rajesh put in place to avoid this happening in future. All right. Now, before I can go on to the next part, let me give you some of the internal controls that Rajesh can put in place. Number one, to ensure that all cash takings are banked daily and then ensure that all transactions are recorded and then also ensure that there are source documents that support every transaction. Dear learners, we're going to go for a quick ad break and I'm going to see you in a very short while.